Since photographing his first rock concert in the mid-1970s, Anton Corbijn has gone on to become one of the world's most recognised and famous rock and roll photographers. From his humble beginnings in the late 1970s in London, he has become almost the house photographer for bands such as U2 and Depeche Mode. His unique and personal images have become recognised throughout the world and today I'm going to be sharing with you a brief insight into the life and work of this amazing photographer. Hi there, my name is Alex and thank you ever so much for joining me today on The Photographic Eye. Anton Corbijn's photography has a distinct and unique flavour and style to it. Primarily his work is in this contrasty, grainy, gritty black and white, um, although latterly he's a, he has expanded to introduce some colour into his photography. Initially, this style was arrived at through, through circumstance, and, and I, I found this out by listening to some friends of mine who were lucky enough to meet Anton Corbijn when he was in South Africa shooting a music video for Depeche Mode when we were young photographic students, and they'd asked him about why that his, his earlier work um, had this, this real sort of gritty, grainy, black and white sort of feel to it. And he said that as a young photographer who'd first moved to London, because he was photographing both at night at concerts and then during the day, he didn't have the money to buy multiple uh, speed film stocks because, of, of course, in those days, the, the cameras didn't have ISOs that you could change on the fly. So he was forced to buy the fastest film stock available that he could, he could afford. And, and this is why his, his earlier work and, and, and subsequently his whole, whole feel of his photography has developed this, this unique style that it was a, 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 he was a victim of circumstance and, and a happy circumstance at that. Of course, it helps to have a unique feel throughout your photography when you are sort of just starting out because it makes your pictures instantly recognizable. And this is something that even today, you know, 40 years later, you can look at a photograph and instantly feel that it's an Anton Corbijn photograph. You know, the, the, the contrast, the, the blocks of shadows, the, the, the gritty graininess to it, and, and, and his unique voice is coming through in these, these, these photographs. Another aspect of Anton Corbijn's uh, imagery and, and visual language that I, that I particularly enjoy is his use of, of what's called differential focus. And differential focus is a compositional technique that is, is similar in a way to what people today call shooting wide open, so that's shooting with the widest maximum aperture, so you get a very shallow depth of field. However, in differential focus, you're using elements within the frame to create layers um, so, so that the photograph itself has, has more depth to it and, and has a, a feeling that it's something different to what we would see naturally with our eyes. This unique way of seeing the world and, and translating it into film using, using these, these sort of various techniques is, is perfectly suited to Anton Corbett's photography and, and the bands and the people that he photographs. You'll notice that he doesn't really photograph just any old people. He photographs bands and, and celebrities whose, whose aura fit his, his photography. And, and we'll talk about Depeche Mode a, a bit more in depth later on, but Depeche Mode are a fantastic example of a band who initially did not really fit with, with Anton's personal vision, but later on became almost synonymous with his photography. This use of, of differential focus for me is, is one of these things that I think a lot of people who are interested in learning and expanding their photography should take into account that not simply just to use the technique, but to learn to, to photograph and see the world in a way that we don't necessarily see with our eyes. And that helps draw people in, into the photographs that, that we produce or the photographs that we see and, and elevates it from being just merely just a simple snapshot. A huge fan of the emerging post-punk scene in the UK, Anton decided to move to London in 1979 to be closer to the hub of this, this music scene. A big fan of Joy Division, he went off to go and watch them play at the Rainbow in Finsbury Park on his arrival in London. And it was here that he managed to blag his way backstage and introduce himself to the manager as, a, uh, in his words, a famous and important Dutch photographer. 
using this bravado, he, uh, he managed to arrange to have a photo shoot with the band, meeting the band the next day. He was given a, somewhat of a bit of a frosty reception by them. They refused to shake his hand and by all accounts were a little bit sort of reticent and, and there under duress. The session itself was over in five minutes and afterwards Joy Division was so happy that this whole experience had just taken such a short time. They, they warmly thanked Anton and, and went on their merry way. Anton then developed the photographs and, and tried to sell them to various magazines around the country and, and in Europe, none of whom were interested at the time because A, Joy Division weren't that important, but also that they said nobody's looking at the camera and we, what's the point of that as a, as a photograph of a band? Fortunately for Anton, somebody did like the photographs and that was Joy Division themselves who invited him up to Manchester to go and photograph them when they were, they were filming the Love Will Tear Us Apart video. This was on the eve of their first tour to North America and, and Ian Curtis at the time was struggling with a lot of internal demons and, it was, and this is when Anton created this, this thoughtful and, and empathetic photograph of Ian lost in thought uh, sitting on a suitcase as was to happen so tragically later on. Ian Curtis took his own life and it was then that the magazines became more interested in in these photographs of, of Joy Division and, and these two images in particular, the one of, of, of them walking down the tube when it's only Ian looking back at the camera um, and this one of, of Ian on, on, the, um, uh, on the suitcase, really sort of cemented Anton's early career and, and helped set him on his way. As a young photographer working on the New Musical Express, Anton Corbein was able to meet and photograph a lot of young and upcoming bands. One of these bands was Depeche Mode, whom he photographed for an article in the early 1980s. At the time, he wasn't particularly interested in, in them or their music. He felt that it was quite, quite saccharine and, and poppy and not really to his taste at all. Despite repeated requests by the band to work again subsequently, Anton wasn't really all that keen until they asked him in the mid-1980s to go to North America and, uh, and do a video for them. It was here that Anton was, was reintroduced to Depeche Mode, who in the intervening years had, had morphed and changed and reinvented themselves as a, as a band that was a bit more mature and a bit more in keeping with, with Anton's own sensibilities. Of course, this was going to be the beginning of a, a very long and fruitful relationship for both the band and, and Anton. It's hard, certainly in my mind, for me to picture Depeche Mode without seeing some of Anton's striking photography and artwork that he's created for them over the intervening years. There doesn't seem to be a better example within the world of, of a band whose visual style and whose musical style are so closely and perfectly welded together as, as the work that Anton has done for Depeche Mode. Another band that Anton Corbein is intrinsically linked with is, is U2. And, and again, Bono has said that like, like Depeche Mode, Anton is, is the fifth member of, of U2. From their very early days on the likes of War and Boy, Anton has been creating photographs um, for them around there. And, and, and again, his unique style has lent itself perfectly to, to you too. And it's interesting to see the parallels between the work that he creates, or the differences rather, the work that he creates for you too and Depeche Mode. The two are so similar and, and so uniquely Anton, but they are also uniquely the band. You, you wouldn't mistake the work that he does for Depeche Mode for the work that he does for, for you too. And yet, they are both totally Anton Corbain's photography. For the last 40 years, Anton has been crafting and evolving his photography. And throughout this period, his, his work has retained its uniqueness. And I think this is refreshing in this day and age where a lot of certainly new photographers seem to chase all the latest fads. Thank you for joining me today. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you here. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you'd like to see more of these, please subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out the next time that I release one. Thank you once again for being here and I look forward to seeing you again soon.